Hi, I'm Rachel Zoe. And I'm Roger Berman. And you're listening to Works, works for, for Us. Us, where we talk to people about what works for them in their relationships and, of course, what doesn't. We've loved hearing about all the different kinds of relationships that we've featured on Works for Us, and we have especially loved hearing about the meet cutes, first impressions, and origin stories of all of our guests. Everyone's had such a fascinating story, and whether they're friends, business partners, or even a married couple, the date that never ends has definitely been a common theme we've seen. Today, we're gonna feature some of our favorite relationship beginnings that have been featured on Works For Us. So let's start with two of our dear friends, Jessica Alba and Cash Warren, who had an absolutely adorable and beyond hilarious first date. It's important when we talk about relationships to understand, like, how did it start? How'd you meet? How did it, how did it happen? We were in Vancouver. Uh, she was in a movie. I was working for the director in this movie. And, um, and one of the tasks as an assistant to a director was she was taking, uh, I had to take photos of her as she tried on different contact lenses because she needed to have blue <laughs> eyes in this movie. And so I went into her trailer and I was taking pictures and flirting with her and trying to like strike up a conversation and trying to be friends with her. And when you're on set, you know, it's kind of like a camp. And so this like little pod that kind of formed between with me and Jessica and, and a handful of other people. And we would go out to dinner every night together. We would hang out. We would get drunk together. We would just chill quite as a bit. As friends. Yeah. As friends for, for a couple of weeks. For like 10 days. And then he tricked me into going on a date with him because I thought it was going to be like the group night again. I and did it with it, us. and <laughs> then it was just him and I was like, "Where's everybody else?" And he was like, "Oh, it's just going to be us." And I was like, "Oh. Cash, that's quite the move." <laughs> I was like, "I don't know if this is safe." Like I, there was a thing that went through my head which is like, "This could be creepy." Like I have like street <laughs> smart, so I was like, "I don't know. Like this is where it could get I'm weird." A huge burly guy. What do you mean? I was You're like, "It could gonna... get weird." And then, and then it, it was. I was like, "It's all right." You know, we're out. It wasn't like we were going down dark alleys. Like we were outside right. with sure. other. People. We were at this amazing Japanese yeah, restaurant yeah. called Tojo's, Tojo's in Vancouver. Yeah. I'd gotten a little room in the back mm -hmm. for us. And we sat Ooh. in there. We had a three and a half hour dinner. And we didn't eat anything. And we ate no food. And Tojo was so, we, we felt bad because he kept bringing, you know, dish after dish. And we just kept drinking sake. And what happened was, is even though like we had hung out and we were chill with each other. Like we both just started getting butterflies in our stomach and we couldn't eat. That's so <laughs> cute. We just like Aww. talked so all cute. night. And then we walked home from we Tojo's. Walked home, which was far. It was like an hour walk. At least day. an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Like across a bridge. Like it was a whole situation. <laughs> so after three and a half hours, what happened? Well, if you, oh, can, if you can share. Ooh, uh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we Wait, didn't get. Roger, you tricked Rachel into going on your first date as well. well. I don't know if it was as much of a trick, but Rachel and I were also supposed to meet a group of people. And we were the only two like people. Like nine of us. And we Wait, were literally. Weren't you working at a restaurant or something? <laughs> yeah. We were. So like, it was, it was like. the group. Like post, all the waiters. It was like same thing with you guys. Like it was sort of like a group of group. us that would go out for, for drinks after work. Except ours wasn't as like chic. Theirs was on a movie set and ours was in a restaurant. Yeah, we were waiters. Okay? Yeah, we were in the I service business. Okay. I was a hostess. Well, for what it's worth, Cash was taking pictures <laughs> okay, of fair, contact lenses fair, fair. Yes. and likely yes. sorting for green M&Ms. Yes. But beyond Definitely. that, so yeah, so uh, no, we were the only ones that showed up, showed up for, for this group drinks. And uh, did you have this similar experience? Did a waiter, a waitress, or anyone in there say you guys make a great couple together? Yeah. Same. Holy shit. Same. So, and what did you say? You're like, we're not a we're couple, We're not a couple. Right? We're just friends. Yeah. Same exact thing. And it, and, But you thought about, wow. It was the first time <laughs> we you thought, wow, like, we oh. could be a couple. Oh. Isn't that insane that that has happened more than one occasion? And <laughs> we had the that. same experience as bartender Josh. We just both, you know, we literally Josh. got there and we and we just had a drink because we're waiting for our friends. And he walked over. He's like, you guys make an amazing couple. Josh, oh, okay, sweet. so wait. So you guys, so what happened? Did you stay together after that? Like, was it, so was the rest of the So we went history? back. Our hotels were across the street from each other. So I walked her back to her hotel and we hung out for a mm -hmm. little bit. You know, I had never had allergies in my entire life. I still don't have allergies. He, yeah, but for true. some reason, that night, like, we start, like, hooking up. 
and I all of a sudden get the craziest allergies. You've like, I'm like snotting. I like his need to, eyes are like stop. This is like Hitch. This is like Hitch. What? You have no idea. And I sneeze. <laughs> Talk in about her no mouth. game. No, we're in her mouth. While I we were making out, he sneezed oh! boogers inside in of my mouth. mouth. Oh, it was the God. worst. Wait, I, I'm, no, I can't. Right I now. can't. But you're it together. Was the worst. But Kosh, this is it. Then wow. you should have known. Jessica, I didn't Look realize that you did that for. I, you, oh. must, no, you must hardcore. have been really Jess cute. Jessica's hardcore. Kosh. She Kosh must have been really good up. looking way you know, once. It's, it was terrible. You, I had to go to the bathroom. I was like talking to myself in the mirror, like, what the F is wrong with you? Like, why are you doing this? Like, get your shit together. The allergies lasted like a month. They lasted, <laughs> like, they lasted for a while. It was great. And we proceeded to still hang out and like he would stay over. And we never like did you know, went all the way to home base. <laughs> it stayed at like second base for a hot minute. So you yeah. were like a lady, Jess. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's also another thing. He was a and gentleman. He, yeah, he just like, and he ate my dog's breath mints. Oh my gosh, that uh, was the worst. The Lister- first time I slept over in her like hotel room in the morning, I was like morning <laughs> breath. Right I didn't now. have my toothbrush. I didn't have anything. And so I get out of bed and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go wash my face. And I walk and I see a Listerine, like the Listerine mints, yeah, like yeah. a little pack. So I grab that on my way to the bathroom. I take one of the tabs out. I put it in my mouth and it tasted like vomit. And I was like, what is that? And I look and it was dog <laughs> breath mints. Oh and my so God. I didn't have a toothbrush. I, like they dissolved. And they dissolved. So it was stuck on his mouth. <laughs> so you had dog breath. You literally had dog breath. It did. And I was like, I got to go. I'm going to, I'll this be back. So I like ran greatest. out of the room. Oh, it was God. nothing but embarrassing moments for like a month and a half straight. Cash's dad is the smoothest person on the planet. And like, I didn't know smooth Cash. Like I only met like allergy Cash. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All his friends and family are like, Cash is like, it's like wind at his back. Like his dad, he's just smooth. And like stuff just happens and things just fall in his lap. And life just sort of, he's so, he has swag all the time. All the time. Dad all the time. no swag. And I only knew no swag cash. <laughs> and it was the first time he like lost. He had no game, no swag. But what I liked, and, and for me, it was the first time with any guy, because I was very terrible with guys. I was not good at dating. I didn't know how to do it. I, at all of it, I was just like weird, uh, insecure. And so with cash, it was like the first time I met someone and I felt like, like I called my best friend actually the day I met cash when he was taking the contacts pictures. And I was like, I was like, it's so weird. I feel like I've met this guy before named cash. And I, and I feel like I'm just going to know him for the rest of my life. Like it just feels comfortable. I was like, it, it feels like family. I was like, have you ever had that feeling? It's super, like, it just felt really like deja vu. Like it's happened. Like it already had happened. And you could be 100% yourself. It's not always couples that have long dates. Clea Scherer and Joanna Teplin of The Home Edit also had an interesting first encounter that actually forever changed their professional lives. A little unknown secret about me is that I actually love to be comfortable. I know, I know, I still wear six inch heels, but when it comes to clothing, I always go for the more comfortable option. Glamorous, but comfortable. It's such a pet peeve of mine when something is too tight or too baggy and you find yourself constantly adjusting or fidgeting with your clothes. It's even more annoying and so not chic when you're fidgeting with your undergarments. And that's exactly why I love Third Love so much. They create high quality underwear, sleep and loungewear that always feel amazing and fit perfectly with cup sizes from double A through I, including exclusive half cups. They are committed to making sure you get the right fit and feel for your body. They also have lounge and sleepwear in sizes XS to 3X. So no matter what your shape and size is, you'll find items that are absolutely perfect for you. It's safe to say that most women know the discomfort of an ill-fitting bra. And when your bra is sized incorrectly, it causes your clothing to lay in a less than flattering way on your body. As a stylist, it is rule number one to never have a client's undergarments visible through their look. 
Third Love's new seamless collection, Form, features wireless bras and form-fitting undies that truly disappear underneath clothing. Combined with finding your perfect size through Third Love's fitting room quiz, you can be sure that your ensemble is what's being seen, not your bra or your panty line. Honestly, the fact that they have half sizes is truly revolutionary because I'm telling you, you'll find a better fit than you ever thought was even possible. I took the fitting room quiz and I have to say it pretty much acts as a personal shopper, but even better. It focuses on size, breast shape, current fit issues, and your personal style to deliver bras and underwear that are perfect for you. Third Love knows you deserve to feel comfortable and confident 24-7, so right now they're offering my listeners 20% off your first order. 20% off your first order. That's pretty incredible. Go to thirdlove.com slash Zoe now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash Zoe for 20% off today. How did you guys meet? Do you remember? We want to know <laughs> kind of where it began because that's where we have to start. We need the origin story. We need the origin. All right. All right. Well, well, I'll give you the origin story. Um, so I moved to Nashville in the spring of 2015 um, from Los Angeles. I moved sight unseen, did not know a single human being in Nashville. I was like having a weak moment. John was like, do you want to move for his job? And I was like, okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking, but I got here. I knew no one. Joanna had moved to Nashville a year and a half prior and also went, sight unseen, sight unseen, my husband's job. right. Didn't, we didn't know each other. Um, but I got here and I was like desperate for friends. So I was like friend dating on Instagram, <laughs> whatever you do what you need to do. Okay. When you're an adult in this world, I mean, I would say no judgments, but I fully judge. She judged whatever. Yeah. You know what? I needed to know people. I didn't know what to do. My kids were too young. Like they weren't helpful yet, you right. know? So, um, I met a friend online. Um, and we ended up going for brunch and I told her about my dream of having a home organizing company. And she was like, wait a minute. I have another friend, Joanna, yeah. who moved, uh, from San Francisco to Nashville, very similar situation. You have kids the same ages. She had a home organizing company in San Francisco. Why don't you guys do it together? Why don't you meet up? No and way. I am a friendly person who likes people. <laughs> so I was like, yes, that sounds great. I can have two friends. And Joanna was like, Ooh, I don't like people and I don't want a new friend. So I actually Which am is a, more like a me. hard pass. Yeah. She, I know. I, you know, I just, I'm tired. I'm old. I just have my friends. You know how it is. You just get to the point of life where you're just like, it's a lot of work to make new friends. I do understand that. I do. I honestly, I can relate to that. Roger's a little more like Clea and I'm a little more like Joanna. We, we actually like the human race. <laughs> we like the human race. It's just once you have your people, you're sort of like, exactly. Oh, it's a lot of work to add exactly, more, you know? Rachel. Very That's close exactly borders. How- Very close yeah. borders. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel. I don't have closed borders. I am like more friends the merrier. No. Um, anyway, but I did convince her to go to lunch with me. She did not want to be business partners. That was very clear. No. But I did convince her to go to lunch with me. And we sat down and four hours later, we got up as business partners. Yes. And um, that same night, so within a whole eight hour span, we came up with our name, our logo, our social handles, our domain. Um, we started our paperwork. We just dove right yeah. in. Wow. I went into business. Wow. Yeah. And no, it's thing. wild. I mean, truly w- within minutes of meeting Clea, I was like, oh, 100%, this is my person. And then we have race car driver. Well, the race car driver, Jeff Gordon and his gorgeous, brilliant, beautiful, amazing wife, Ingrid Vandebosch. And although they can hardly agree on what their first date actually was, the first impressions are pretty hilarious and very candid, I might add. I probably know, but I don't remember. Um, like, what, how did you meet? Like, when did you meet? How did you meet? I got the whole story when I had my boys dinner with Jeff and Aspen. Yeah. I'm going to actually tell them how they met. Well, actually, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear from you. I want to hear <laughs> from you. I guarantee you Roger's story is way better. Version, not mine. Basically, there was two, there was a meeting and then a, and then a pause and then a meeting again. Oh, Go, Jeff. Yes. Talk about yes. it. Yes. By the way, you just put it so much better than I could put it, Roger. <laughs> but, but yeah, let's go, I guess. Ingrid, tell I want to hear Ingrid's because I think yeah. I've actually heard Josh. Well, we were at a dinner. Yeah, there there we were some mutual, together mutual in New York friends. City. 
They're mutual and friends that invite us to the studio. He was kind of hanging out with a group of people, and I was not really planning on being there. But I, I stopped uh, stopped by because I was going to be in the Hamptons the next day with them. So I was like, who are these people? Let's check out. But I did know uh, that Jeff was going. So I just kind of want to check it all out, see if I might change my mind of going <laughs> to the Hamptons. But this is the best part. This is the best part. So, so one of my good friends in, it said, hey, come come to this dinner out in the Hamptons and be my guest. I need you to, to sit with me at the uh, at the table. It's this big table with a lot of people at the party in the Hamptons. Like be a wingman type of thing? Yeah, I was yes. the wing girl and he was the wing man. <laughs> so my friends didn't want to go be alone, single. Right. And I'm like, man, I don't want to go. And I'm like, I, you have to, you have to. So I ended up just being his, I would guess, wing girl. Yeah. So, okay. So now <laughs> we're on our way to this dinner. And Ingrid's meeting us, I think, separately, or you were in another car. I can't remember how, yeah. how we all got to the party. Where? But to, to the dinner. In, in Now I'm in the Hamptons. I yeah, mean, but that was the first time was the day before, silly. I know, but it's so brief. The better story is the dinner. <laughs> yeah, but that was after. That was after. <laughs> no, that was like was the next after. day. That was yeah, the next but day. we met. All right, <laughs> Ingrid, tell us the salient moments of the day before. What, what, well, what happened? I just went my way and I, I had to go to a party. And then they went their way. They went out, I think, that night. And then the next day, they were all got to know each other. And then I drove the next day to the Hamptons. But, you know, they were all by the pool. Oh, this is where we're by the pool. Oh, this is this is even better than that story. Yes. Well, why are you going? Well, I thought that we were was, talking about the dinner. Meet, so did I'm, you meet me at another time? Or another we're time? never getting well, we it. We're never <laughs> leaving this, the first. This, this, this is, is going to be the one question this show. This is amazing. The entire show. I can't show. wait to do the end where it's like the newlyweds part. <laughs> the okay. dedicated. Oh, God. Well, so remember that? Yes. So I, I so I'm, I'm by the pool. I'm by the pool. And I drive up and I'm by there by the pool and I didn't bring a cover up. So I'm like, oh, now I have to do my strut to the pool and see how this goes. So I had... So I'm there hanging out, you know, talking to some friends. And here comes Ingrid out of the corner of my eye through this like glass door walking in a bikini. Pool, and I was like, yeah, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> and she's but he was on a date, by the way. I you. was not. Yes, you were. No, no. I well, believe in Ingrid. Hopefully Jeff. being on a date. Okay. Hopefully. And man, them. I watched her walk into this pool so gracefully. <laughs> and it's funny because now I know her. I know that she was uncomfortable, but uh, she didn't look at it at all. So... She just looked so confident. I was like, wow. <laughs> and she got in the pool. I and didn't get in. I thought you, well, you were at the no, other no, end. No, no, no. It was end. like a semi walk end. Ingrid yeah. doesn't go in the pool. <laughs> well, that would mess up our hair and makeup. And if I have to. I just but. remember me stopping what I was doing and getting to you. I just quickly. lay down on my chair and I went, hi, everyone. And I'm like, oh, God. And I was like, kaboosh to the other end of the pool. <laughs> Hello. But then the funny missile. part is like, we, uh, there were like, it was quiet, so we wanted to play some music. And so he gets up and he goes, I have some. I was like, oh, no, there's going to be like this country music that's coming up. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> and so he comes up and it's total hip hop cool thing I was into. And I was like, oh. And that was okay. it during the whole first of the burning your own music on your seat. You know, you yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Stuff. Yep. And, yeah. And and so so I was I was all about music at that time. So I so I didn't know that I would impress a girl with my music, but boom. Yeah, and then he played the Nelly thing with the Jeff Gordon would have liked. Well that was my yeah, there. that was my, my <laughs> clothes, man. I mean <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> I love you so That's much. Amazing. All right. Well, okay. So let's hear about. Okay. So hold on. So that actually takes us to our next question because I already know. Was there immediate like attraction Clearly. to the answer on Jeff's side? Yeah, we yes. know. Yes. <laughs> yes. He almost like there's fell no way Ingrid fell pool. for him. There, I know Ingrid too well. There's no way Ingrid fell for him immediately. Ingrid, what did you no, think? No, it took it took about a closer meeting up. He tried. And then it took like till the next few weeks when he came back to New York. So it okay. wasn't immediate. But that evening, there was we were in the house, you know, all together with people. And I said to my friend, I'm all, because I was a little older <laughs> than the group that they were with. And uh, I said, I I'm only coming if I have my own room. <laughs> I'm not sharing. 
and it's not happening. So they gave me like the, the, the I guess it was the master suite of the house. <laughs> I and love then, you so much. Finger, and you are so she just queen. walks in the head oh, She's like, I'm not comfortable. Like Give me the master the suite. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I'm not comfortable. And she gets it. I mean, I'm like, I've been through this. It's not happening. So that he was with the younger girls. And he, he thought he was going to score there. What the hell is this? Not true. <laughs> this and then the they were sharing rooms. And then I had my own room. So I locked the door. When we, we went out. We had, it was really fun. And he got home. And I'm like, oh, going to bed. They're going to bed. So he kind of didn't like where he was at. So he knocked on my door. And I'm like, I open. I'm like, yes. Like, what? Aren't you busy? <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, so he goes, oh, that's a little full in my room and it's not comfortable. Can I stay I'm, here? I'm, I'm like, like over in the no. bunk bed room, you know, <laughs> like every, everybody's sleeping all over the floors and this stuff. Is and she's over here in the master and you, turned him, and you turned him down? So wait, just so I understand you guys. It was a, a nice yeah, big I, bed. So he knocked and he said, can I stay here? I'm like, no. And I, you know, he left. And then like 15 minutes later, he knocked again. Oh, I'm can persistent. If I'm anything, I'm, I'm persistent. <laughs> I love this. That's amazing. This is great. So listen, we put pillows in between us. She ended that's up finding. That's all I can say here, but while, I'm putting pillows like, between okay, us. Okay, that, that's, that's your side. Is my side. That's the best story. We put pillows between us. And, and we were talking, and it was nice conversation. I'm like, I really like him. But yeah, this is not happening what he had planned. Oh, yeah. So, of course, I had to in make my, my move. I'm like, this is my opportunity. <laughs> yeah, like, like, she let me in the bedroom and the bed. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> so, and then, boom. And the conversation was just flowing, man. It was just the word was just <laughs> magical. And I thought, if ever I had a shot, this is it. And I so leaned lean. over the pillows. Yeah, oh, and I was like on my, on my back. And he kissed me. And I, I'm like. What are you doing? I've like never halfway I've, kissing. I've never felt a woman's mouth just Talking. go numb and still and send a signal through her lips um, to mine as quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh oh. <laughs> Boom. Went right, turned over and went to bed. Yep. And we definitely believe that some people are absolutely meant to find each other and complement each other perfectly. That was 100% true with Nate Berkus and Jeremiah Brent, who met after Nate had found love and tragically lost it. My approach to home and interior design is very, very similar to my approach to fashion or styling. I'm a big believer in investing in amazing statement pieces and using accessories to create a unique and individual look, whether it's a room in your house or an outfit for a major event. I recently placed an order from the online furniture store article and received the most gorgeous black with gold detailed dining chairs. Originally, my thought was to use the chairs in my formal dining room. However, the fit just wasn't totally right. Fortunately, they were an absolute perfect fit for my very glamorous new conference room in my office. They are incredibly chic and sophisticated and add a touch of glamour to the room. It's probably no surprise that I love adding little upgrades to my home and office whenever I can. In a time when so many of us are spending more time at home, I would highly suggest upgrading your space to help refresh the area. Living and working in a space that makes you happy is guaranteed to help with productivity. Article's perennial favorite, Sven Collection, is expanding to the bedroom. They have the new Sven bed and a slate of sleek modern desks with ingenious extra storage like the Fantol and so, so much more. Another reason to shop with Article is convenience. I promise it is the absolute easiest way to make your space look even more beautiful. Article combines the curation of a boutique furniture store with the comfort and simplicity of shopping online so you truly get the best of both worlds. They have a team of designers that focus on beautifully crafted, high quality pieces that are built to last a really long time. Listeners, you know how important quality is to me. So trust me when I say that Article gets my quality stamp of approval. Article is offering our listeners $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Go to article.com slash Zoe and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. 
That's article.com slash Zoe to get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. We met at your birthday yes. first. The unnamed in number. Person, right? Which was quite a night. Which the was quite number. a night. Which yeah. was quite a night. And then we, we were back in New York, Rachel. For, we were some. What that creepy downstairs yeah. place. Yes. But we were back in New York doing something. I was here. I was there working. I know we were done. Yeah. I don't know if I was there. I don't know. Where was I? No. You were there. You were at my birthday. You were that I was. But years later, I went back to New York. For, oh, for Libby's, en- Libby's engagement. And yeah, and it was, it was um, a really fun party. Though. Well, yeah, it was a great party. It was. And I, and Libby, Libby stood me up and I was like, okay, but, and I'd never gone anywhere by myself, but I was oh. like, you know what? Yes. Oh, forgot. It was a this is so shoe dark. party. Hit the launch yes, of his store. Yeah. Yes, it was. Um, and it was yes, like, it was. And he, Iman, we were all there ah, at the yeah, Four Seasons. Yeah. Yeah. And he had texted, he's like, are you going to come? And I was like, yeah, sure, fine, fine. So I went. Can felt, I say something? Hold though? on. Okay. Felt awkward, felt uncomfortable, <laughs> didn't want to be there, but I was like, I'm do it. And that's the night Nate walked up to me at the bar. I remember. And I was like, hi. And he like grabbed my ear. And I was like, remember thinking, hmm, not really appropriate. Hot, hot yeah. Nate. Yeah. Hot. Grab yeah. my ear. The, cool. the angry boyfriend wasn't around. He was establishing dominance. 100%. Right yeah. like, establishing on it, alpha male well, right my away. Little, my little sister, Marnie, was standing there because she had interviewed Brian on the way to the party for Stylecaster. Yeah. And she, was, she came into the party and Jared and I were talking. He was there alone. I was also there alone because technically I wasn't really invited to that party until the last minute i forced an invitation via brian's mother which was you know I, which is also not something i'm in the Good habit of doing but yeah i had to like i had to worm my way in and we and i, I reached out and i grabbed his ear and my sister looked at me and looked at him and she goes are you guys dating? Like, what's going on? He never grabs anybody's ear that's like something that like he used to grab our ears when we were kids like what's going on are you guys dating so we set up a date that night and we, well, we he went back to the Hamptons. We were going to go antique shopping. Yeah. And, as, as and the do. date never ended. No, we, we went on that date and I never, we never parted. We never separated from that day on. I mean, it, it's, it's oh my as cliche. God. It's like me and Rachel. That's exactly, That's what, exactly happened what happened, happened to us. us. That's what you ago. do. That date just turned into that evening, turned into yeah. forever. Yeah. And that's how, and I think... There's something so magical about that because people talk about how hard it is to be in relationships. And we've all been in with the exception of you guys who've been dating since high school. But um, people people talk about how hard it is, how much effort relationships are. And they are in many ways, but they're not when the fundamentals are there. When it's right. And that's 100 percent. You know, there's certain pieces that are just not hard. Like, obviously, you have to grow simultaneously while you're growing individually and your family changes. And all. But like certain things, like I like him. You know, I like him. I love being around him. He's my best friend. Sometimes I want to kill him and vice versa. But, you know, we I I mean, I I, I wish it for everybody because the way I felt that afternoon when I walked into that house and more importantly, the way I felt when I left. I just, we both, that was it. I mean, it was like, it, was like, it felt like coming home. Sometimes business comes before friendship. And for Jennifer Garner and her best friend, uber celebrity hairstylist, Adir Abergé, that's exactly how it happened. I started doing hair when I was 15 years old. And I worked for this guy named Arthur Johns, who was... Uh, really big hairstylist in LA. And at the time, I didn't know. I didn't know what celebrity meant. I didn't know anything. I was a kid that was born in Israel, you know, moved here at seven years old, um, didn't have the easiest of childhoods. And by 15, kind of found myself on my own, trying to build my own career. And I kind of came in touch with this guy named Arthur Johns, who gave me a chance. And subsequently, I worked with him and his clients were Tina Turner and Shaka Khan, Casual. and Olivia Newton-John, and Julie Christie, and Diane Carroll, and Betsy Bloomingdale, and Nancy Goals. Reagan, and all of those women really raised me until I was like 21 years old. And then at 21, I left Arthur, and I started working a little bit in the music video world. And um, I remember a wonderful friend named Sharon Robertson, who used to run a um, big music studio giving me Jewel as the first client. And then I worked with Britney Spears and then Madonna. And that was kind of the world. And so then the music video world kind of ended completely, 
right? Yep. There was so much money infused in that world and then it died. And so I was like, okay, well now I need another agent. And I got an agent and that agent knew Nicole King. And they said, you have a job with this um, girl named Jennifer Garner. And I was so excited. I remember showing up to the job. I was super nervous. I didn't really know um, much of what you did, Jen, but I remember feeling like this big, like age difference because you had already gotten like alias. You had done all these movies and I was just coming into Best the world. show of all time. And what's so funny now, Jen, is that we're actually not, our I age know. gap isn't that different, but when we were younger, it felt it did so much bigger, right? It did. It did. It did with every. It did with everyone. It's so lovely to have that even out because I go to you as like this source of wisdom in my life, and to think that at one point that couldn't have happened, I wouldn't have seen it that way. I would have seen you as someone that I was taking care of, and that right. is absolutely. So I don't know when or how that flipped, but there's so many people. Oddly, Nicole and Meredith are both, Uh um, Nicole's five years younger than I am. Never for a day has she not been in charge of me. But you know, but it takes years to build into these beautiful friendships. And so that's how it started. And today I literally, it's like, it's one of my favorite human beings on the entire planet. And I think, you know, just backing up a second, I've just been thinking about this is that when you realize that you've gone from the friendship that is so deep and lovely that you have with so many people to something that is just going to be around forever is yep. when you realize that it's it's equal. It is about yes. both of you because I think for so many people Amen. who are sitting in the chair – you are taking in some, you're giving out a lot of, you know, what do you think? It's all kind of about you, but it's when you finally break through, you know, and I think that a deer in your world, you're almost conditioned to only give so much of your own personal stuff because you're there to absorb and to get people ready. And you're there to make people feel a certain way and take their energy and and move them and to give service. So it's not true. So it took a long time for you to be all the way vulnerable and open with me. It's been so much fun to reminisce about the incredible stories that have been featured on our show. We cannot wait to hear more incredible stories on Works For Us. And if you've liked what you heard so far, please make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts and give us a rating or review and keep listening. And check us out on Instagram at at works.for.us. And also, don't forget to tell us your story. We're excited to announce that there is now a Works For Us phone line that you can call to leave us a message with your very own relationship stories. And we're planning to share our favorites on this very podcast. You can also ask us for relationship advice. Although I cannot stress enough that we are not actual certified experts, but we'll still take your questions and give you really good answers, I think. So if you want to share your story or ask us a question, give us a call at 657-549-2251. That's 657-549-2251. You can also find all of our contact info on our Instagram at at works.for.us. That's at works.for.us. Let's do a little bit of a highlight and a low light this week. Uh, we like to obviously share with our listeners some of the things that are going on in our lives. And, uh, you know, there's good and there's bad. So I'll I'll start off this week, Rachel. Uh-oh. No, I think, you know, I think the highlight and the low light almost are related. Um, for me, being back in Los Angeles, um, you know, being here after spending uh, so much time away on the East Coast, you know, it's like... I really feel now that the East Coast was my home and the West Coast is my home, if you will. So like the highlight for me was kind of coming back home and really feeling like um, a, like a boost from it, almost like, ah, you know, I'm where I'm supposed to be. The low light, unfortunately, is related because I have to be honest, just spending time this summer with 
um, you know, our family, really your family, but our family. Our family. Yeah, our family and friends that I've known and grown up with forever. And just, you know, honestly, post-COVID for me, it's just about spending time with people. I don't necessarily even need to do anything, but just sitting around and talking has been really, I don't know, just catching up. It's been really fun for me. So uh, the low light is I'm going to miss uh, some of some of the time, you know, with people that I really care about. And, uh, you know, we'll have to make the time to see them again next summer and hopefully before then. Okay. So my highlight, I would say, is I agree with you in coming home and just being in my home, in our home and like feeling kind of situated and placed and in our in our, just in our space, in our own space. So I do love that. My low light is definitely, I really miss my family. I miss being with my sister every day. I miss my parents. I miss the fact that my, our kids get to be with my parents and my sister every day and their cousins. It's so special for all of you that get to be with your families all the time and your kids get to grow up with your, their grandparents and their aunts and uncles. It's a real gift. It may not seem like it all the time, but it is. And then I would also say another low light for me is that it was my birthday and um, I'm another year older, which is TBD, what number that is. And also that I've had a cold sinus infection, non-COVID, I repeat, non-COVID, not contagious um, for what feels like forever. And I really miss feeling healthy. So appreciate your health and take care of yourselves, everybody. And that's it. And we will see you, well, not see you, but we will speak to you guys with an amazing guest next week. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.